Hi, welcome back to another great video. My name is Dr. Herman, and I am here to share with you about a dizziness and balance condition that I've started working with recently. Uh, this uh, lovely lady found me on the internet, and she has been suffering for years with a terrible, terrible imbalance problem, a terrible vertigo. Uh, she explains it as a, as a rocking uh, back and left. Uh, the room is rocking, rocking in her jaw. She's got pain and tingling in her jaw. The brain feels like it's rocking. It's worse when there's barometric pressure changes. She, um, she had gone to chiropractors and she had been to the world's probably number one out of, out of maybe there are two top functional neurologists in the world, and she went to the number one, who I respect as the number one uh, functional neurologist, spent a week in the clinic, spent thousands of dollars in a week, and uh, was left with a very slight, slight change for the better and uh, within, in her dizziness, her vertigo disorder, yet in about a month, if I remember correctly, it just came back to where it was before the treatment. They actually told her that she needed a psychiatrist, and that's just foolish. And so now um, that uh, those clinicians are not holding the number one position uh, in my eyes anymore. She has Hashimoto's autoimmune disease, so we know there's inflammation in the brain if there's inflammation on the thyroid. She has had, for 10 years, irritable bowel syndrome. She has had tooth pain. In, in one or more teeth at a time. She has had heat intolerance. She's been on hormones for years. She's been on hormones for years because of menopause-like symptoms. So she's had to uh, calm down those symptoms with hormones. Well, let's understand something that without the hormones, the symptoms come right back. So nothing is being fixed. Nothing's being found out and figured out and discovered why the malfunction is taking place. So no, menopause is not just a change and that's what women have to expect. There are causes. You can have infections in the fallopian tubes, in the cervix, in the endometrium, in the uterus, in the ovary, in the thyroid, in the hypothalamus, in the pituitary that leads to uh, menopause. She also felt that her irritable bowel syndrome has decreased dramatically, if any symptom ever, once in a while because she takes certain kinds of digestive enzymes and certain supplements for that. But Let's get something straight. She goes off and she knows if she went off of those pills, the IBS, the irritable bowel comes back. So we've got to understand when it comes to a vertigo disorder in a human being, it's not always the many ears disease. It's not always the uh, little crystals in the ear that are not in their right place. It's not always a, uh, a trauma to the head that may have caused the, the uh, vertigo disorder. Um, there are a, a, a number of possibilities, and I'm going to share with you what I found with her. Uh, she's also pre-diabetic, she says. I mean, there's a number of different symptoms here that we don't have to go over right now. But I'm going to tell you, I did an initial scan on her when I first got to examine her, and I found on her, in her cerebellum of her brain, which is the number one controlling part of the human brain, controlling balance, cerebellum is in control of that. The cerebellum has Babesia parasitic infection. It had Lyme Borrelia burgdorferi infection, multiple parasitic helminth flukes, compounds of mercury from her teeth, and she still has the mercury in her teeth. She's afraid to get them out, but she's starting to realize they need to come out. But by the right doctor, in the right way, in the right time, there's certain uh, factors for some people. When they can get the mercury out, they can get worse. So we've got to be very careful about that. I found tuberculosis vaccine in her cerebellum and measles vaccine side effects and residues in the cerebellum. There were other issues here, especially what came up in her, um, in the circle of Willis, which I'm gonna talk about in this, uh, in this video, because the circle of Willis is an incredibly important uh, 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 tissue. And what we've gotta understand is that the circle of Willis is a circle, it's a blood vessel. Now, you're well aware of the carotid artery that, that runs in the side of the neck, and what happens if there's a carotid blockage, you can have a stroke. You're aware of that. So they do carotid scans to see how much blockage there is. Well, the carotid arteries, they connect into a circle. So they go up like this, and then we've got this halo type of, of, of vascular tissue known as the circle of Willis. So what would happen 
Well, let's, let me tell you a little more about the circle of Willis. Is that this circle also has extensions of arteries that come off of it like this, like a claw on both sides. And it, those arteries dig into the brain because those arteries are the ones that are bringing blood flow to all of your brain tissue, all of it. So what would happen if there is congestion and inflammation within the circle of Willis? What would happen? Would blood flow be normal supply to all the areas of the brain, or do you think that'd be less than normal blood supply to areas of the brain? If we have infection and toxin that is swelling the internal tissue of the circle of Willis, that artery, if and when we've got swelling and there's going to be a narrowed space to the blood vessel for blood flow to get into the brain, do you think you have normal, higher, or lower possibly blood flow to the uh, tissues in the brain. I think that there's gonna be less. And not only that, but the blood flow that's, that's going through that artery that is bringing a fungus or something uh, that's, that's, that's got caught in that arterial tissue, can that fungus or Lyme infection or metal get into the brain tissue and cause that brain tissue to now be stressed and malfunction? And the answer is yes it is totally possible. So, in our first step, we had to do things just for her spleen. Uh, and she couldn't understand clearly and wanted to see results like that, but sometimes the body just doesn't do that. We've got to listen to the body and we've got to see what its wisdom is ready to do for itself. And with this work, I found with her that her spleen had electromagnetic stresses in it, uh, listen, your spleen is important. Your spleen is a tissue in your body. It's an organ that has a job to do. And its job is removing infections and toxins. Its job is removing damaged red blood cells from the circulation, removing damaged white blood cells from the circulation. Guess what happens when the spleen is infected and sick? Do you think that it can remove the damaged red and white blood cells? And the answer is most likely not. The spleen is super important in helping you fight cancer because it removes the damaged abnormal, when it can recognize them, damaged abnormal, red and white blood cells. So if it finds an abnormal cell, cancer, what you call cancer, it's gonna remove that. But when it's sick and infected with tap water chemicals, hookworm I found in her, Lyme Borrelia infection, Borrelia bugdorferi, uh, bacteria, platyhelminthic worms, and ionic radiation. People have heard about the Fukushima reactor that exploded in Japan. Well, that stuff has come across and it's been recorded in different parts of the water and, and, and the crop in different parts of the world, even here in the United States. And we found ionic radiation along with those infections in the spleen. So in her first step, we had to clean out the spleen. And that was important because in order for her body to start dumping something out of another tissue and recognize when a cell is damaged so that it can get the bad cells out of the body, we gotta make sure that the spleen is clean. So what would happen if we left the spleen alone and we went for another tissue where there's infection and toxin and went to clean out that, that system? Where do the infections go when they're, when they're dying off? Are they just gonna all go through the intestines or through the urinary tract? Maybe they've got to go through the spleen before they can get somewhere else. You got it? If you go to flush a toilet and the pipes are clogged, you flush and it comes back in to the bathroom. We've all been there before. So her spleen was first. Now, what I found with her was that in her second visit is that the circle of Willis was ready to be tested. Now, I, I'm gonna go backwards a minute. Is that I found with her, her bone marrow was infected and toxic, the acoustic nerve in the ear was infected, the oculomotor nerve that controls eye movement function, part of the eye movement function, it was infected. I found part of the stomach infected, the peripheral nerve tissue infected, I found her intestines infected. I found all these, but the body was ready for what it's ready for, when it's ready for what it's ready for. If I go out on a first date with a girl and I wanna do something else with her and she says, no, I'm not ready for that yet, if I don't listen, I get rejected. So when we are looking at treating your body, we've gotta find out what it wants, when it wants what it wants, in what order it wants what it wants. If we don't do that, we can experience no change, we can experience rejection, and that is not my game. 
I want to know how to do it for someone. So there's a unique set of skills that I've been able to acquire over years of diligent research and a ton of sacrifice to, to figure this out. In her circle of Willis, I found that itself it needs some repair remedies. We can actually make remedies of the exact tissue and, and give somebody a drop of that remedy to help boost the function of that circle of Willis in this case. I found with her electromagnetic stress in the circle of Willis. I found the Borrelia burgdorferi infection in her circle of Willis. I found multiple fungus infections in that circle of Willis. I found iatrogenic chemicals in her circle of Willis. I found multiple intracellular bacteria and parasitic infections in that artery. So what happens to the artery when it is being bitten? It's like getting a mosquito bite on your arm. Do you get a little swelling where the mosquito bite is? Yes, you do. Now imagine you had 50,000 mosquitoes only on the bicep, all biting your bicep. First, it's gonna hurt. Second, your arm's gonna become pretty inflamed from all those mosquito bites. Simple, easy for you to imagine, right? Well, just imagine those mosquitoes are inside the artery and they're biting and they're inflaming the artery and that's, you've gotta have a clear pathway for the blood to get up to the brain and with no inflammation in the bloodstream. You starting to understand? You starting to grasp this? She's also got antibiotic residues in that circle of Willis. Certain things are gonna be done in a certain order for her. She also is ready for some specific powerful uh, boosting remedies. And for the frontal lobe and the cerebellum, her myelin and the peripheral nerve function. And everything had to be put in a certain order, everything at a certain time for this person. And uh, I expect those tissues to actually start to respond well. This is not gonna clean up her whole system because she's got infections in the bone, she's got the teeth that have metal in them, she's got infections in the intestines, it all needs to be relieved because you can have an infection in your intestines and in your bone and it causes a brain problem. It can. I've seen headaches disappear, chronic migraines disappear where I found infection in a, a vein in the leg and removed that and all of a sudden there was major reduction in the head pain. Uh, she's also getting specific formulas uh, to help her with her ovaries and her pituitary gland in this round because we've got to be able to fix the cause of the endocrine disorder because with an endocrine disorder, when we have an endocrine disorder, we have a, uh, an, an, an everything disorder because when the hormones are out of balance and those systems that create the hormone balance is imbalanced, the immune system, the endocrine system, the nervous system, the brain chemistries, everything is connected. So like a domino effect, when the hormones are out of balance and that falls, the immune system, nervous system, everything becomes stressed. I'll follow up with her again in two weeks. She starts those remedies now. Today is, I think it's uh, June 22nd, the day after Father's Day in 2015 that I'm making this video. And she'll be starting those and we'll just wait and see the outcome and uh, maybe she'll start to respond with some relief of her brain issue, uh, and maybe not, and I just don't know in what order things are gonna happen. I don't have a crystal ball, I'm not God, but I'm gonna tell you something. If you've got 150 opponents that are stressing the way the brain is functioning, and, and it's in all different areas of the body, and you, don't re and you remove one of those, those opponents that's stressing your brain, you still got 149 opponents you gotta get handled. If all 150 are causing the balance disorder, you're gonna notice some changes over time. She'll notice changes over time, but I don't know when complete relief occurs. Does it occur when she only has 10 invaders, 10 opponents that she's gotta deal with? Or is it you know, where she's gotta get the mercury out of the brain? That could be, and we can't get that out of the brain until the teeth are handled, which I've made a very clear discussion with her. So I'll share with you the updates as we go along with her and uh, and uh, click, on my, click the subscribe button on my YouTube page. I put up videos all the time. Uh, come and like me on my Facebook page. I look forward to helping you. The office number here in my clinic is 954-370-3100. I've got a unique set of skills and I'm ready to help you get well. Uh, my office is in South Florida. I look forward to helping you. Thank you for watching this and uh, let's get started.